Hey everybody, it's Andy Hogan again. I first wrote A Monkey on Kids Back with the goal in mind of giving you opportunities to talk to your kids when they're facing tough situations in their lives. Things that are like monkeys on their back that maybe they're going to be carrying for a long time. Today I'd like to go through the book and share with you some things that are in here in the illustrations and in the story that maybe can help you as you talk to your child and things that you can point out as you read the story. Obviously, children are going to understand on different levels, but just pointing out some of the things in here, I hope you can keep them in mind as you read the book to your kids. First of all is the cover. You'll notice the title talks about a monkey on Ken's back, and I hope that it's obvious that Ken's got a monkey on his back and he's happy about it. He's okay with it. One other thing that grabs your eye just when you first notice the cover is there isn't just a monkey on Ken's back. There's also a monkey on this random girl's back, and that's a clue to what's in the story. And obviously the lesson of the book is that everyone carries monkeys on their back, or in other words, everyone has problems. So let's get into the book and point out some of the things that we face and how they compare to life and some of the challenges we face. On the first page, it has Ken, and he's looking up at the ceiling and looking down at the floor trying to figure out what's different. What's going on? You'll notice the, the ceiling is red and the floor is blue and obviously those represent different emotions, um, particularly with mental illness. Uh, the ocean, the blue ocean, we talk about the deep depression and so I like to compare that with the ocean. So maybe you can say to your kids, how does this problem in your life, how does that make you feel? Does it make you mad, like you're red with anger? Does it make you sad, like you're down in the deep? of the depths of the ocean. Those are conversations, items uh, that are in those illustrations. In the next page, you'll notice the thing that you notice first, obviously, is Ken's mouth is huge and he is just not happy to discover he has a monkey on his back. There's also something uh, that, that is a little bit more subtle in the book that you might see, is there's a picture of space um, with planets and stars and that's to represent the deep, you know, the deep uh, lasting effect of mania um, or obsessive compulsive, compulsion. Uh, these things are deep and lasting um, and, the, and the thoughts that they produce sometimes feel like they go into the depths of space. So like I say, there'll be different understanding levels of different children, but these are just things that you can keep in mind as you're sharing the story with them. On the next page, Ken's trying to get this monkey off his back. He tries yelling, he tries running around, he tries waving his arms, he try, and he even changes into his school clothes. And obviously these are different ways that children try, that children try to deal with handling the problems they face. Um, yell, yelling loudly maybe represents being upset, being mad, being irritable. Uh, running away. This is something I think a lot of adults do. They try to run away, get away from the problem. One other thing in this illustration is you'll notice for the first time uh, there's a family picture on the wall. So you get to see Ken's family for the first time. And again, this is a subtle, uh, a subtle reminder that everyone in the family has a monkey on their back. When Ken goes down to breakfast on the next page, his mom has a very obvious monkey. It's bigger than Ken's and it's a, it's a little bit different looking. Um, of course, there will be a lot of different monkeys throughout the story and this is the first time you can point out to your kids, hey, the monkeys that people carry, the problems that people have are different. They're different sizes, they're different shapes, they're different kinds and they're different colors. Um, and this is the first time you see that. It also, in the storyline, it talks about Ken not wanting to talk about his issue. He's embarrassed, he's sad, he doesn't feel good about talking about it. And um, something I like to say to children when I share this story is, do you think Ken's mom would understand how he was feeling? Could she possibly understand? Well, yeah, she could, because she has a monkey too. But Ken doesn't see it. On the next page, when Ken's walking down the road, again, you see uh, others that have monkeys, but Ken isn't noticing them. He is too into himself and his own problems to see that other people have monkeys too. Um, the man with the gorilla uh, I, represents how big uh, some, some of the issues are that 
people carry. And yet this man's still going to work, even though he's got a big gorilla, a big black gorilla on his back. The next page, we meet Ray, Ken's friend, and she's trying to comfort him, but Ken won't hear it. Ken doesn't feel like she can understand. And once again, everyone in the playground, in, in the schoolyard, has monkeys on their back. And they're different kinds and different shapes, but uh, Ken is still too sad to notice. So when Ken goes to see a professional, the school nurse, um, you'll notice there's monkeys on the wall to show that she does understand. and. Um, she can teach him, but Ken won't let her. And that's something that I think is important to point out to the children, that this nurse really could help him. She could help him feel better if he would let her, but he wouldn't let her. Instead, moving on to, oh, um, before we go on to the next page, you'll notice on the, on the pictures on the wall with the girl and the boy and their monkeys, the scenes that they are in, one is, is a beach with a sun setting, and the other is high in the mountaintop. So this, again, once again, represents those emotional highs and those emotional lows. Maybe it's way up in the mountains, or maybe it's down at the beach. Uh, but those emotions can have a wide variety of, of when and where the child has problems or what situations. It doesn't matter if they're on a beach in Hawaii or climbing in the high in the mountains. Sometimes those monkeys, those problems that we face are always there. So in the next one, in the next page, Ken goes to the dump and he decides he's going to try to get the monkey off his back in his own way. And this is where, as he's walking into the dump, I had the illustrator put in some special things to represent different, different uh, actions or attitudes or behaviors that children and later teenagers and even adults can fall into when they don't let the professionals help them or even their friends and family. You'll notice there's a broken iPad, a broken can, a broken bottle, broken Xbox, TV, and even a paper where somebody was, that, that somebody used to do a line of drugs. Um, these all represent um, bad choices or ways that people try to escape their problems. Um, not saying those things are all bad. I mean, obviously iPads, Xbox, they have their place, um, but when, they, when they're in the junkyard, when they're, when they're trying to be used for escape from problems, that's when they can become problematic. And over the next, to the next page, that's what happens with Ken. He starts getting chased by a dog. Now you'll notice, that look on the dog's collar. The dog's name is Addiction. And, and then again, in the dump, there's different things that represent different addictions that people face. There's a prescription medicine bottle. Some people use prescription medication to try and escape. They use that. There's a big refrigerator. Some people do use eating or have eating disorders because of things they face. There's a computer, a TV, and a car. All these things that represent different things that can cause addiction when you use them to try to escape problems and not deal with the problem at hand. So Addiction, the dog, chases Ken and he falls over the page. He falls and he hits rock bottom. That's what the pit represents. When you hit rock bottom and there's nowhere to go, um, he finally humbles himself and he gets on his knees. And obviously the knees are symbolic of reaching toward a higher power. You notice there's also clouds in the sky. Um, the clouds obviously represent how Ken feels. He feels like the sky is clouding up, there's no hope. He's hit rock bottom. But he finds the humility to call his dad, honestly tell him what's going on, how he feels, and start talking about it for the first time. And when he finally reaches out for help over the page, his dad comes and his dad's not upset. His dad's helping, his dad's loving. And I hope that the children who have this story have the same kind of parents. And I'm sure you are one of those parents because you're sharing this story and you're trying to help your child. So you're not going to judge your child. You're not going to be upset. You're going to help. And as Ken reaches up for his dad's hand for the first time, Ken notices his dad also has a monkey on his back. And his dad says, you know what? Everyone does. It's really not that big of a deal. So over the page, as they walk out, his family, his friends, those people who loved him, are waiting to meet him. And for the first time, Ken sees, oh, I forgot, back on the, on the back of page on Ken and his dad, 
you'll notice that the sky has changed and there's a sun sunshine behind his dad. And once again, that represents enlightenment. Um, it can also represent divine help when we ask for it. So then he comes out over the page and his family's waiting and he sees that they have monkeys on their backs, but they're happy, they love him. And he decides over to the last page, he decides he can be happy when he has a monkey on his back too. And he's given the thumbs up with, um, and he's looking back as if to say to us, to the reader, to the child, to your child, it's gonna be okay. Everyone has problems, everyone's dealing with them, but we're here together and we're helping each other. So they're moved, they're, they're skipping off into the sunlight, into the sunset. And uh, the, word, the, the word here is, can begin to understand that he could live happily. And understand is leading into the next step of the five steps that I list in uh, my, my book that talks about five steps to get help. Uh, a monkey on Ken's back, if you're over the page, it, talks, it lists those five steps. And a monkey on Ken's back is for number uh, two, which is authorize the illness into your life. Or in other words, accept it. It's okay, everybody has problems, everyone has trials. Um, and then understand, once you accept that, you can start to learn. You can start to understand the monkey on your back or to understand the issue you face. Learn how to control it, which is step four and then heighten your life, which is step five. So that better life is coming, even though there's a permanent monkey on your back. But in order to find that life, the child and all of us has to accept what we can't change. So, that's a monkey on Ken's back, and some of the things that are inside there that I wanted to point out as you share, your, as you share this book with your children. Thanks for watching. And I'm Andy Hogan, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.